SoundCloud. Uh, welcome, Rabbi Chaim. Welcome back. Uh, it's so lovely to speak to you. We were going to talk about some of the symbols on the table during the Passover Seder. We have a table laden with different parts, laden with symbolic foods. And you were going to talk about uh, just one and some of your favorite Torah related to the symbol of the matzot, the bread that's on the table. Okay, so uh, good day. Very nice to see you again. And uh, I want to talk about the matzah and something that perhaps we don't pay attention to, but having three matzahs on the table is really a very odd thing. I'll just point out that uh, uh, religious people always start their meals with bread and they usually have one loaf of bread or a roll or one slice of bread. On Shabbat, we always double the, the amount of uh, uh, bread, you know, when the manna fell in the desert, there was a double portion for Shabbat, and we symbolize that with the two halot on the table, and therefore on every Shabbat and every Yom Tov we have two loaves of bread, but on Pesach we have three matzahs, and the question is why do we have three matzahs? And it's actually not easy to understand where the three matzahs come from at all. There's nothing in the Talmud, or there's nothing in the early halachic uh, literature that would suggest that you actually need to have three matzahs on the table. And anything you find in trying to explain the three matzahs on the table all sounds like something being written after the fact. In other words, there are three matzahs there. How can we explain it? Rather than mm -hmm. this is the halachic imperative. And that's why we have it. And maybe I'll just quote uh, just out of interest. There was a Rabbi Elijah Menachem, the son of Moses from London who lived in the 12th century before the expulsion of the Jews from England. And he was one of the Baalei Tosfot. Uh, Tosfot is the uh, early uh, mid medieval uh, commentators on, on, on the Talmud. And he says the reason that we have three matzahs is that we have one matzah for each of the special mitzvot that involve matzah at the Seder. So you have one for the Hillel sandwich, and you have one for the uh, uh, Hamotzi, and uh, you have one for saying the special blessing, Allah Hilat Matzah, which is different than just the bread at the beginning of the meal, and for the mitzvah of matzah. So we have three different mitzvot connected with matzah, so we have a special matzah for each of them. But that sounds very much like an after the fact explanation rather than a before the fact explanation, because why do you actually need two different matzahs, one for the mitzvah of matzah and one for opening the meal when you open it with the same slice of matzah? So there's no real uh, uh, explanation uh, there. It seems that this is something that developed over time and it developed over time from a different area of uh, halachic intrigue. And that has to do with uh, the question of what is the matzah to begin with. And one of the descriptions that the Torah gives to for matzah is it calls it lechem oni. And lechem oni, uh, the, the simple explanation of that, the word ani in Hebrew me with an ayin, not with an olive, the word ani means a poor person, lechem oni means the bread of poverty. And the question is, what's actually meant by the bread of poverty? One explanation of that is that the matzah, unlike the challah and Shabbat, that you want to make it nice and fancy and to make it a celebration of the things that you've achieved during the week, that the matzah on Pesach has to look like the bread that poor people have, the bread that poor people would eat. And one of the things about poor people is that they don't eat whole loaves of bread, they eat scraps. It's kind of things that people would give to them, hand out to hungry people on the street or something like that. You might get half a loaf of bread, you might get a bit of a slice of bread, you might find an, an, an old sandwich in a rubbish bin, but what you don't have is big fancy loaves of bread. And the custom developed on Pesach to uh, not use whole matzahs, but to use half matzahs for the, and the half celebrates that it's the food of the poor. Now that stayed in our Seder. We start the Seder 
the first thing we do is we take one of the matzahs and we break it in half and we throw half of it away. That later developed into the afikoman. But we don't do that in order to have an afikoman. We do that because the mitzvah in Pesach is to have lechem, only the bread of the poor. And instead of using whole loaves of bread, we use half loaves of bread because the poor people eat crumbs and they don't eat loaves. And uh, it seems that originally there were two matzahs that turned into one and a half matzahs because you always broke the matzah in order to have the peace because that was the, the symbolism. And later someone felt uncomfortable that on a Yom Tov like Pesach, you don't have two whole loaves of bread like every other Yom Tov and they added another slice to it. So you ended yeah. up with two whole slo- slices so that it would be proper for a Yom Tov and the half a slice as the symbol for Passover. And then you end up with the two and a half, which became three that you break half, put it away, and that becomes the Afikoman. So that's one explanation for how the custom developed. But that would mean that Lechem Oni means the bread of poverty. And poverty is symbolized by having a half slice of bread. But there's another explanation, which uh, I like more. And this was an explanation that was given by Rabbi Jonathan Cohen of Lunel, who is in the Provence, er- with the Provence area of the south of uh, uh, France. And he understands the bread of the poor, not bread that symbolizes what the poor eat, but the bread that symbolizes our responsibility towards poor people. And what do we mean by that? The way that they would feed the poor in antiquity wasn't, uh, certainly wasn't uh, the government giving benefits like we have today. And it certainly wasn't even uh, uh, hostels or soup kitchens or, or things like that. Those also existed. But the primary way of feeding the poor was that people could knock at your door at the end of the meal and ask for your leftovers. And mm. what people would do at the end of the meal is if they had, we'll talk about the bread, if they had half a loaf of bread on the table, they'd give it to the poor. And if they had a quarter of a loaf on the table, they'd give it to the poor. If they had a slice, they would give it to the poor. But they would get whatever was left behind on the table. And it was not only bread, it was other things. Actually, there are modern chari- charities built on the idea of rather than putting our leftovers into rubbish bins, we should have a mechanism for making sure that this gets to needy people. But that's actually a very ancient thing that happened on an individual uh, uh, basis. And Rabbi Jonathan of Lunel says that on Pesach, you always needed to make sure that there was bread left over for the poor people. So if you had two chalas on your table, which for Pesach meant two slices of matzah on the table, by the time you did the eating of it for the mitzvah of Pesach, and by the time you uh, did your hamotzi at the beginning of the meal and you ate whatever you had at the meal, matzah, which isn't as big as challah, meant that there wasn't enough food left over for the poor people. And the rabbis instituted or the custom created was to always have an extra slice on the table that you didn't need for anything. It wasn't mm-hmm. like uh, uh, the guy from London said that it's one for each of the mitzvot. The idea is to have a third challah that has a third matzah that has no purpose whatsoever so that you're guaranteed to have leftovers at your table. So when the poor people come at the end of the meal to look for something to eat, you would always have a slice of matzah left over in order to give, give them. So that's a different kind of lechem oni. It's not bread that represents the poor, but it's bread that cares about the poor. It, it's bread that nourishes the poor because your matzah, part of the imperative of matzah, it's not only remembering the exodus from Egypt, part of the imperative of, of, of Pesach is remembering that you were a slave, remembering that you were poor, remembering that you were hungry, and that gives you a moral responsibility for the people around you. So of all the symbols that you have on the Seder plate, you also have to have a spare piece of matzah that has no purpose whatsoever except being left over at the end of the meal, because our extras is someone else's nourishment. And I think that that's a, a, a wonderful symbol. And uh, I, I think it's something that, that we all have to remember. Thank you, Rob Chaim. Uh, we wish everybody uh, a Chag Sameach, and that's certainly some good uh, uh, Torah and teaching on 
a question of why three matzot on the table useful um, for all of our uh, starim uh, this year and uh, lovely to speak to you and lovely to hear a little bit of uh, more about the matzah. Okay, and Chag Sameach to everyone. Chag Sameach.